It was the people who bore the brunt of the blackout, struggling through a night and most of the day without lights, elevators, subways, or air conditioners. Steve Young reports on how they handled it. New York in July of 1977 faced a blackout that lasted more than a day. CBS News cameras captured that summer's looting, arson, and chaos. That era inspired a first-time novelist, City on Fire is this season's most talked about new book. New Yorkers of the 70s live with constant unease. The Big Apple nearly went bankrupt. The son of Sam Killing terrorized millions. Jeff Glor spoke to the author of City on Fire about the novel that sparked a bidding war and a huge advance. There's a moment, you know, on the turnpike and you look out the window and you see, for the first time in that trip, the skyline. And it had always seemed to be saying to me, you're here, you made it, you're home. You thought, this is it, this is where I'm this is, meant to be. This is where all the people who aren't meant to be anywhere else, who, you know, are meant to be. The spark of an idea that would become the biggest and boldest novel of his generation came to Garth Risk Holberg in 2003. I got off this, the bus in New York and I went down to Union Square and I got out a pad. And I mean, I had white heat, you know, in my brain. Twelve years after this North Carolina native made a fateful trip into Manhattan, City on Fire hits shelves at 944 pages. Risk Holberg wrote it longhand. Even though it seemed unpublishable to me as a project, I mean, it was just so... Unpublishable. Long. Unpublishable. Um, I mean, I knew it was going to be somewhere between 875 and, you know, 970 pages long. Those kinds of, I just didn't see those kinds of books being published. So why'd you do it? Because it was, it had to be done. I mean, it was a joy. It was a joy to do. Diana Miller is Risk Holberg's editor at Knopf. It's a really warm, sympathetic, generous book. So to have both the smarts and the emotional side together seamlessly is, is a great combination. City on Fire is set in the New York of the 1970s, focusing on the heirs to a great fortune and the messy lives and city they live amongst. Oh, out again. Including the blackout of 1977. It was a miserable, muggy Wednesday night when the lights... Part of the sense of possession that I felt in the 45-second space where the entire book came to me was that somehow I had been dreaming about or communicating with this time period for years. I'd been driving around the back You road. wanted to live in that time period. I, I didn't, it wasn't a choice. I mean, I'm driving around the back roads in North Carolina, you know, feeling like nobody gets it and listening to Patti Smith. You didn't live through this era, but people who did live through this era I in the 70s in New York seem to think that you nailed what the city was. Then. But they did such a good job leaving a set of traces, photographs, albums, Books. This was the go-to desk. If you Risk the, Hallberg, 36 years old, oh, spent much of his time researching the novel inside New York's main public library. Four years thinking about City on Fire, five years writing it, another couple years watching an unprecedented bidding war develop over who would publish it. In the end, Knopf won for a reported $2 million. Do you think about the money part of it? As little as I can. Why? It's just not, um, that's not a, a useful set of thoughts to have in mind when I sit down at the desk to work on the next thing. Because it's transactional. Because it's transactional. And, and good art isn't. But the rights to City on Fire have now been sold to movie producer Scott Rudin, which means this big book will likely soon be on the big screen. As the blocks piled up between him and the grief counselor's office. Risk Kohlberg, who just left for an 18 city book tour, won't say what else the future holds. For now, he's letting readers linger over the past. I'm in. I'm in, too. Um, I want to see it. Too. Just his description, guys, of he felt white heat on his brain. He knew that there was something he had to do. Yeah. yeah the the book critic for the New York Times says he captures it as dangerous, magnetic allure for artists, for dreamers, for kids eager to escape the platitudes of suburbia and captures what it's like to be young in New York. Wow. More powerful than this since yeah. he wasn't even there at the time. You of course, go, you know, Garth. Gail reads so fast she'll be done with it in two days. Oh, no, that's going to take me three. Yeah. <laughs>